This PC build here was pretty troubled, but that's okay because I ended up getting it built in the end and to be fair with the parts that I've chosen for the updated build, I'm actually pretty happy with how well this thing performs at the price I paid for it. But before I get into the video though, let me know, have you ever run into an issue while building your PC? And if you have, comment what it was down below in the comments. So if you've read the title to this video, you'll probably know that I had quite a few issues trying to build this PC. And it all stemmed from the case which I was using. Originally, I was trying to build it inside the Aerocool CS107, I believe it was called. And it turns out that case is absolutely horrendous. It was literally the worst case I've ever built a PC in. It's essentially just got no space for cable management at all. And even one of the fans stopped working. It still lights up the RGB, but it doesn't spin for whatever reason. I don't know what is up with that, so yeah. And because of this, I switched a lot of the components around, including the CPU and motherboard and the case. So if you see the B-roll of the montage and you see it's different components, that's why. But it's not all doom and gloom though, because I've managed to get this PC here built. And arguably, I think the case looks a bit better, if I'm honest. And... I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out, all things considered. So for the updated build, I think I've chosen some components which complement each other pretty well. At the heart of this system is the Intel Core i5-4460. This 4-core 4-thread Haswell chip is built on the 22 nanometer architecture and it does run pretty well in certain applications. If you're looking at some esports games, these 4-core i5s are incredibly cheap and they also have quite a bit of performance to give. And because I didn't want to use the Intel stock cooler, I've decided to use the £10 Snowman cooler, which does a better job than the Intel stock cooler. And arguably, I think it looks a bit better as well. I think the i5-4460 will pair pretty nicely with our graphics card today. And for the graphics card, I went with the AMD RX 474 GB. This one is the MSI Gaming X one, so it's a much higher end version of it and it performs very well in my opinion. It cools very well. I don't think it got over 60 degrees in gaming. So yeah, this graphics card is a very good RX 470. The four gigabytes of frame buffer may seem small, but for the games that we're trying to play on this PC, four gigabytes is more than enough as well. For the RAM in today's build, I went with eight gigabytes of dual channel memory. So that's two four gig sticks. I think this pairs pretty well with the whole system overall as Eight gigabytes of DDR3 is not very expensive at all. I think it goes for around six pounds used. And esports and indie games don't really use that much RAM, so eight gigabytes is fine here. 16 gigabytes is also a very good option as well, as DDR3 is just incredibly cheap. Now moving on to the first new part that I've put into this, and this is the boot drive. Here I went with the Silicon Power A55, I believe it's called. Let me hold on, let me just check. Yes, I went with the Silicon Power A55 SSD. It's a SATA SSD and it's 512 gigabytes. It does have an SLC cache, which is not as good as the DRAM cache is, but for the gaming purposes that we're using this for, it's not going to be bad at all. Also, I will have all the new components linked down below in the description. These are Amazon affiliate links, so I do make a small kickback from them but this is at no extra cost to you and it does help out the channel quite a bit and it will be massively appreciated if you buy anything through these links. And this lands me at the case. This is a IONS case. I can't remember the model name. I will put it in the edit though. And to be fair, this case has been very nice to build in. It's pretty quality as well. It's got an all steel finish and for less than 40 pounds, it also comes with a tempered glass side panel as well. And the rear fan is RGB and who doesn't like RGB? It is a static one, but it's RGB. Also for extra cooling, I stuck a 120mm intake fan in the front of it from up here, and I think this cost me, I think it was £12 for a pack of three, so it's really not that expensive just to put an extra fan in here. And for the motherboard, we do have technically the broken Gigabyte motherboard, but I've tested it fully and it works totally fine. I believe the capacitor which I knocked off, which I went over in a couple of TikToks, does actually go to the audio chipset somewhere, but the audio sounds fine on this, so I don't really know what the capacitor was doing. As long as I don't knock off any more, it should be fine. But other than that, this Gigabyte board is totally fine for this system. And lastly, the power supply which I'm using in this build is the Corsair VS450. 
admittedly, it's nowhere near the best power supply in the world, but the 2017 one and onwards isn't prone to blowing up like the original one, so that's good. And the total wattage of this system is less than 200 watts, so it'd be totally fine in this system. And maybe if we wanted to upgrade the GPU to something like an RTX 3050, something like that, this power supply will have that covered. As you might have seen from the montage and from what I've said previously in the video, the montage build footage does look a lot different to the overall build and that's because I did try out a dual cam setup with both my ZV-E10 from Sony and also my Sony A7R2 and when I found out that that case was absolutely horrible to build in, I decided I was just going to build this without recording it because I was getting pretty annoyed and the day was dragging on quite a bit so I just decided to build this off camera. And this leads me onto my little recommendation. Do not buy the Aerocool CS107. It's an absolutely terrible case to build in. I did not have fun at all. And maybe that's on me because the case only costs about £35. But then again, this one cost just under 40 as well and I had no issues with this one. Another issue which I did run into with that air recall case is one of the fans did stop working in it. The RGB still lights up perfectly fine but the fan will spin up for about a minute after boot and then it will just stop for whatever reason. I don't know what's going on there if I'm honest. As always with these budget PCs which I make I like to stress test them before I sell them. This will allow me to give content to you guys which I know you like and it will also allow me to stress test the system before selling it so I can stand behind my product. Additionally, it will also allow me to put performance figures on the Facebook listing, which I know potential buyers would like to see as well. All testing on this is done at 1080p and FSR has been used in some games, but I'll say where it's been used. So, let's get into the testing. Starting off with the Cinebench R23 benchmarks, which essentially allow me to stress test the CPU and get some scoring out of it as well. For the single core performance benchmark, it got 788, which is not too bad, all things considered, for a 9 year old CPU at this point. The multi core score could be better, but that's because of its 4 cores and 4 threads, and here it scored 2663. Throughout the multi core test, it didn't go above 54 degrees C and I don't believe it went above 24 watts and it was using one volt as well so this thing is incredibly power efficient. Moving into the gaming benchmarks now and the first game up is Modern Warfare 2. Here I set it to the minimum preset to get the most performance possible but I did up the textures to normal so it doesn't look like a muddy mess. Also AMD FSR 2.1 has been enabled and set to quality. This netted 85 FPS on average with 42 FPS for the 1% though. It's a lot smoother than what the performance figures do suggest and the in-game benchmark is sort of a worst case scenario for multiplayer anyway so yeah you can play Modern Warfare 2 on this PC. 
Next game up, and this is actually the hardest game that we ran today, is Fortnite. Here I set it to DirectX 12, and I also locked it to 60 FPS. This should lower the CPU overhead as Fortnite does struggle on four threaded chips. I also set it to the low settings, and this netted us 58 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 8. This could also be down to some caching as well, because you know what Fortnite is like with caching. It is pretty bad if i'm honest hopefully over time performance should stabilize i'm looking to test fortnite and how it reacts to different thread counts so if you want to see that video get made let me know in the comments down below moving on to rainbow six siege now and on the medium preset the game doesn't look terrible at all and to be fair when you're playing a game like this you don't really want the best graphics as you want the most frame rate possible here on these settings you've got 180 fps on average with 115 fps for the one percent low so if you've got a 144 hertz monitor with this pc you're looking at a very good gaming experience if you want to get into rainbow six siege even though it's not an esports game, I did want to mention Fallout 4 because if a PC can run Fallout 4 fine, it'll be able to run GTA 5 fine as well, as I do find that they do perform very similar. Here, it defaulted to the Ultra preset, which is basically the first time today, if I'm honest, and uh, it does look pretty good on the Ultra preset, and it got 60 FPS on average with 55 FPS. This game is locked to 60 FPS, and this is what I recommend as the physics are tied to the frame rate because Bethesda's creation engine is not particularly great, if I'm honest. But you've got plenty of headroom if you want to mod the game as well. More on that in a bit. Last game up today is F122, and here on the medium preset in my typical wet Australian Grand Prix benchmark, I do find that this is the best preset for the RX 470 from which we tested. It was quite a few months ago now. Like then, it performs pretty decent now with 86 FPS on average and 54 FPS for the 1% low. F122 really doesn't care what sort of CPU you've got and it performed really well here. So if you're just looking to play F122 on a gaming PC, this one isn't a bad shout. So overall then, this PC hasn't performed too badly. The only one where it's performed kind of bad was Fortnite, but this was to be expected because Fortnite does struggle quite a bit on four cores and four threads. But with that being said though, I didn't really have the time to let it cache all the data. So if you let it stick around and cache for a bit, it should be fine. Either way though, I do recommend an i7 four core, eight threaded chip at least for Fortnite. But other games like Rainbow Six Siege and even F122 and even Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 for that matter did perform very well and they were very playable on this system. But when it comes to Fortnite though, I might make a bit of an investigation video to see how it reacts to different thread and core counts as well. So if you want to see that, stick around and subscribe for that. Whenever I do a video like this, I have to mention the Xbox Series S, and that's because this console only retails for £250 here in the UK. And if you just want a raw gaming system, the Series S, to be honest, is providing a bit of a better value, even though it does cost a bit more than this PC. However, if you like to do work on your PC, maybe even start a business or even run a business, something like that, you can't do that from an Xbox Series S and that's where something like this PC would be perfect for you. Also, there's a lot of games out there which are just better on PC. Like for example, I really like Minecraft Java Edition, but I really don't like the Bedrock Edition for whatever reason. So I just play Minecraft Java Edition, if that makes sense. And another thing where PC is better as well is modding support. For example, the Bethesda games on console only support up to 4GB of mods on the Xbox, I believe, and I think it's only about 900 meg on the PlayStation. And when it comes to the PlayStation as well, you're only allowed assets which are from within the game for some arbitrary reason, I'm not sure what that's down to. But when it comes to PC, you can install as many mods as what your disk space allows, and there's none of this only in-game assets rubbish as well, so you can mod pretty freely on PC. So, if you want to do work on your PC, play a specific game which you know is better on PC, and if you want to get into some game modding, I think a PC is definitely a better option than an Xbox Series S. But if you want to play some of the latest games, 
up to 120 hertz mind you the series s should definitely be considered for you so overall this pc for what it is is not terrible at all is it the best pc i've ever built certainly not there are quite a few things i'd like to change maybe up the ssd to one terabyte up the ram to 16 gigabytes and also up the cpu to an intel core i7 maybe a 4770 something like that but most esports games out there like rainbow six siege rocket league counter strike go games like that they won't really utilize more than four threads and more than eight gigabytes of ram and that is where a pc like this is very exceptional at what it does so with this being said i'm going to leave this video here if you like this one like it stay subscribed for more tech content because i have finished university for this year as well so i've got nothing but time to make content and I'll catch you in the next one.